Well, hello, everybody. In this one, I figured I would show alternative distributions with the GNOME desktop besides Ubuntu. My reasoning for that is because I checked out 23.04, and unfortunately I said 23.03 in the last video, and I apologize for that. I don't know where my head was, but um, the reasoning for that was I was extremely disappointed. I was not impressed. It was... I'm not a fanboy of Ubuntu, but I'm not a hater either. I've used it for years, or I used to use it for years, until, well, I was using Kubuntu, until it got stuck on a version with a bunch of bugs in it, and they stayed there on the 25 series. Now, they're supposed to be up to 27, I'm going to take a look at it, but I, I don't think I'm ever going to go back to that. Anyways... We'll get to my five recommendations, plus uh, an honorable mention, right after this. Fedora, or as it was called back in 2002, the Fedora Project. And right around the time of, the, of its first release, Fedora Core was born. It was originally developed as a continuation of the Red Hat Linux Project, which is now known as RHEL, or Red Hat Linux. Red Hat Linux used to be like all the other distros, pretty much. Don't don't blame me on this, guys. <laughs> Red Hat 5 was the last release of it, the distribution, I think, before it incorporated or became a corporate business, rather. A little history with me and uh, Fedora Core. I think it was Fedora FC8 or rather Fedora 8, codenamed Werewolf, was when I first tried Fedora. And I stayed with it through Fedora 9, Sulphur, Fedora 10, Cambridge, and then eventually coming back on Fedora 15, Lovelock. Prior to this, I used Slackware. And I used Slackware all the way up until Fedora 8. Currently, Fedora offers four different versions. Fedora Workstation, Fedora Server, Fedora IoT, and Fedora Cloud. Plus, Fedora Core OS, which is a container optimized OS. Fedora now offers Fedora spins, like the KDE Plasma desktop, XFCE. It also has spins of LXQT, Mate, Cinnamon, LXDE, and SOAS desktop, an i3 tiling window manager. And not to mention it has the Budgie desktop plus Sway, a Wayland based tiling window manager. Fedora Labs offers astronomy, comp neuro, design suite, games, jam, Python classroom, security lab, Robotic Suite, and Scientific. Now these are all distributions specifically tailored for their individual areas and case uses. Now the different ways you can download it and install it, one is a network installer. You can get it through the torrents, alternate architectures, cloud-based images, which you download, and then the very last one is everything. You get everything all in one. I've never been able to get that one to work personally. I Maybe it's just my machine. And also, it also offers immutable desktops. You have Silver Blue, 
Kianote and Cyrusia. And the difference between silver blue, Kianote, and Cyrusia is silver blue is a GNOME desktop environment, Kianote is KDE, and Cyrusia is the Sway Tiling Window Manager, built for Wayland. So if you're new to Linux and you're thinking about giving Fedora a try, just remember they don't have all the programs available like a lot of the other distributions have. You have to enable it. Now I've seen there is an option to en enable it from the desktop. Before you would have to go into the terminal and do a read through on their website on how to do that. So it's getting better, it's getting easier it's almost new user friendly, in my opinion. It's, it's almost there. So if you're new and you want to give it a try, by all means, give it a try. It is a really good distribution. Back in the day, I had some problems with it and it wasn't doing what I needed it to do. And I was working on some servers. So I had to switch over to um, Ubuntu and Debian and get the work I needed to get done that way. I uh, Like I said, I gave it another option on Fedora 15, ran it for six months, and the only reason I went back to Debian and Ubuntu is because I got so used to it that, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The current version of Fedora is Fedora 38 and it supports the GNOME Desktop 44. Give it a try if you want. It's a really good distribution. And there's some really good distributions that are based off of it. Number four. Zorin OS is designed to be easy with the Zorin Appearance app. It lets you change the desktop layout to feel like in the environment you're familiar with, whether it's Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. And not to mention, it is a Ubuntu-based distribution. So you have access to the Ubuntu repositories. Zorin has Zorin OS 16.2 Pro, Zorin OS 16.2 Core, and Zorin OS 16.2 Lite. The Pro and the Core have the GNOME desktop environment. The Lite uses the XFCE desktop environment. The Core and Zorin OS Lite are free to download. Zorin OS Pro is paid. With Pro, you get extra desktop layouts, support, and what they're calling their professional grade creative suite. And what do you get in the pro version? You get a Photoshop compatible image editor, illustration software, audio workstation, animation software, and the same 3D graphics and effects software used by Hollywood Studios. And with the uh, purchase, you get what's called Zorin installation support. So if you're new to Linux, and you want the back end that their support can help you with, go ahead and uh, download and give Zorin OS Pro a try. They do have the core and the light versions if you just want to test it out. And I ran the core for about six months and it's pretty good. I ran in video graphics. Sometimes there were some problems, but overall it's a pretty, it's a really good distribution. Number three. The Nabarro Project. Nabarro is a modified version of Fedora. It gives the user access to third-party repositories, which Fedora has off by default, such as Wine Dependencies, OBS Studio, third-party codecs, such as GStreamer, and NVIDIA drivers. Its goal is for new users for point-and-click ease of use and is not to be considered a Fedora spin. Nabarro comes in three different flavors. Nabarro Official, with extensions on it, which is the GNOME desktop. And then Nabarro GNOME, which does not have the extensions. And then the KDE desktop environment. And all three have access to the same packages. And it's noteworthy to mention that Navarro is considered to be a gaming distribution. If you're interested, check them out. I ran Navarro for a little while and then switched off of it only because 
only because the GNOME desktop environment, I, I'm not a fan of it, unless it's on a laptop. And my laptop, I can't game on it, so... Like I said, if you like GNOME, check out the Nobara Project. Number 2. Rizzy OS. A Seattle-based OS you can trust. And that's directly from their website. Rizzy OS is Fedora-based. It supports Butter FS, Wayland, even on NVIDIA hardware, and Pipewire. It uses the GNOME desktop environment, and for the back end for the shell, is ZSH. Now, ZSH, they do not ship a plugin manager or framework. ZSH itself is faster than Bash and provides many bonus features like plugin support. Also, it took Linux Mint's Web App Manager and forked it. So you get web apps similar to Linux Mint ready for you on your desktop when you create them. And there's no need to worry. Web apps from the store also have security measures to prevent users from being redirected to malicious websites. Rizzy Welcome. Set up your computer with ease. Rizzy Welcome helps first-time users install drivers and codecs. Set up FlatHub, RPM Fusion, and find resources related to Rizzy OS. Plus, they have quick setup scripts that help you quickly install certain applications you may need for certain tasks. If you're interested in it, go check out Rizzy OS 37.1.1. And it's available right now. Number one. OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE is a free and open source RPM based Linux distribution developed by the OpenSUSE project. In 2006, with the release of SUSE Linux 10.2, it was officially renamed OpenSUSE, playing on the pronounced similarity open source. Fast forward to 2015, Novell slash SUSE. Linux, the company who develops OpenSUSE, which was purchased in 2003, split the streams into two giving birth to Leap and Tumbleweed. On April 27, 2011, Attachimate completed its acquisition of Novell. On April 27, 2011, Attachimate completed its acquisition of Novell. Attachimate split Novell into two autonomous business units, Novell and SUSE. Attachimate made no changes to the relationship between SUSE, formerly Novell, and the OpenSUSE project. In 2018, EQT Partners acquired SUSE. In July 2018, being the third acquisition of SUSE Linux since the founding of the OpenSUSE project. Today, OpenSUSE, with its two distributions, is sponsored by companies such as SUSE, B1 Systems, Hinline Support, and Tuxedo Computers alongside individuals. The OpenSUSE community develops the Open Build service, YAST, and the OpenSUSE distribution. Plus, propagates the use of Linux and free software wherever possible, and collaboration is open to anyone. Tumbleweed is OpenSUSE's flagship distribution and is a rolling release distribution. Updates are continuous and previous states are saved as snapshots. Leap is OpenSUSE's classic stable re release with releases every one year. Leap, considered to be an attractive server operating system as well as a desktop operating system. Fun fact, in 2015 OpenSUSE Leap with the deviation version number 42.1, playing off of the version number 4.2 from 1996, which was called SUSE Linux at the time. The number 42 refers to the scene where the AI computer in the movie, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, is asked the meaning of life and gives the answer 42. Open SUSE Leap and Tumbleweed come with GNOME KDE Plasma in the XC, XFCE desktop environment, which you get to choose during installation if your installation has internet access. And onto my honorable mention, OpenSUSE Micro OS is, an, is a immutable distribution developed by the OpenSUSE project taking advantage of edge or cloud computing. It is designed to minimize the need for maintenance by running from a read-only file system, which prevents malware attacks. But don't worry, there's a way around that. That's if you need to install to the root partition. 
It also uses the same installer as Leap and Tumbleweed, giving you the same option for installation. One more thing, that's if you're interested, go check out OpenSUSE Cubic, and that's Cubic with a K. Well, that's it for my top five GNOME-based distributions with the GNOME desktop environment that are out there, giving you more choices if you feel the need to, to hop away from Ubuntu's Lunar Lobster, which I'm sure they will fix sometime in the near future. Come on, Ubuntu. <laughs>